even if you hate history or you just don't understand it or it never made sense, which is very common, sadly, you can do this at home. Hey everyone, this is Yvette Hampton. Welcome back to the Schoolhouse Rocked podcast. Oh my goodness, I'm so glad that you're with me. I so often think about all the different things you could be listening to right now. Music, other podcasts, you could have your TV on. I mean, there are just a million other things you could be doing and you have chosen to listen to the Schoolhouse Rocked podcast. And let me just tell you that really, really blesses me. Um, It blesses my family, it blesses our guests. And, uh, you know, before Nikki and I got on uh, to record today, we were, we prayed together and I just was so just hit with the fact that thank you, Lord, for allowing us to have the platforms that we have to be able to bring encouragement to you, to our audience, um, because we really do love you guys. And it's not for our glory, it's for his glory alone. And so we really pray that this podcast and the Schoolhouse Rock to Ministry is all about drawing you closer to the Lord and therefore being able to lead your kids closer to their Savior. So anyway, I just want to let you know, you guys know as you're listening that we are so grateful for you. Um, thank you for taking the time to listen. So Nikki is back with me today. Um, if you missed our episode on Monday, we talked about uh, language arts and the importance of reading and the importance of copy work and how all of that plays into homeschooling and making homeschool actually so much simpler than I think most of us want to make it or think that it needs to be. And so if you missed that, go back and listen. Um, Today, we're going to talk about history and making history fun. But before we do, I want to say thank you on the math side to our sponsor, CTC Math. If you guys are looking for a great online math program, visit ctcmath.com. Seriously, if you guys are like me and like Nikki, who don't love math, (laughs) Let them teach it for you. It it takes so much pressure off of you, the mom. CTCmath.com. You can try them out for free. Well, Nikki, welcome back to the podcast. Um, Thank thanks you. for being back with me today. Yeah. Let's talk about history today because history is such an important part of educating our kids. And when I say that, I think sometimes people think, well, I have to know all the dates and my kids have to memorize every word, every date and every name that's in history. And that is absolutely not the truth. Now, some kids really love that Mm -hmm. because God has gifted them that way. That's how he's Mm -hmm. created them. And that's wonderful. But I know that that's not for everyone. So walk us through what history looks like for maybe for your family and what it can look like for other families as well to make it fun. Sure. Well, I'm one of those kids that naturally loved history growing up. I was homeschooled. And so I had a lot of extra free time that I wouldn't have had normally. And I was mostly invested in reading a lot of books with my free time. I fell in love with my American government book uh, a long time ago. And that just kind of led me to read about the founding fathers and the revolution. And from there, it just went into all of history. So I've been a history buff since I was a teenager. But I know not everybody is. And I, and I want to show how relevant history can be even if you grew up hating it, not knowing it, not understanding it, don't want anything to do with it, it's so important. And the reason that it's important is because we tend to repeat history. There's a lot of history we do not want to repeat. Um, We do not want to stumble blindly into tyranny. We don't want to need another revolution. Um, If we can preserve freedom and preserve the ability to worship God and to spread the gospel, that's what we need to keep. There's so many other reasons to know history and understand it. But when it comes down to it, we need to know why it affects us. And Mm. if we don't know our history, we are going to repeat it. And we tend to repeat the worst parts. So even if you hate history or you just don't understand it or it never made sense, which is very common, sadly, you can do this at home. So the first thing I want to say is, You probably, if you went to a typical public school, you grew up having social studies instead of history and probably interconnected or disconnected units, I'll say. Maybe one year it was state history, one year American, a different year it'd be world history. A lot of our history since the 1980s in American education has been heavily influenced by Howard Zinn and people like him who have tried to completely recreate what happened in American history. A lot of people have no idea who Howard Zinn is and they don't realize that they actually have been educated with his concepts. A lot of half-truths and a whole lot of twisting. Um, But 
there is a way to overcome all of that. Parents can learn with their kids. And as long as I've been in the homeschooling world, which is 40 years now, because we started homeschooling when I was a kid in 1983, um, parents have always said, wow, I can't believe how much I'm learning now that I'm homeschooling my kids. Yeah. And that's kind of universal on every subject. But history is one of the big ones where people say, I didn't know these things. I never mm -hmm. heard these stories. And so what I'm going to tell you works with whatever curriculum that you're using. If you've already bought a curriculum and you're thinking, oh, no, this one's not going to work. Don't think that. Just start where you are and dive in with your kids. Um, history is something that I think is best done in person, hands on. Lots of different senses are involved. And so the first thing you want to do is make it relevant. Why does this matter? You know, your kids mm -hmm. are always going to say, why do I have to learn this stuff? My kids ask it about everything. Um, so why does history matter and how does it matter to me? So one of the coolest things you can do with your kids is a timeline. And timelines come mm -hmm. in all forms. It can be a neat one all down your hallway walls. It can be in a notebook. Um, some people do a poster board of a certain century. But I love to have one that shows the beginning of the world all the way up till now. And we are young earth history people. So we believe Amen. that the earth is around 6,000 years old. And yeah. so our history starts at Genesis 1. And we follow the timeline all the way through the current day. And so as we go through all of our history, we keep the same timeline for many years. And so the kids get to see the progression of history. But they also get to see where they are in, in relation to so many other things. And so besides putting down dates like, you know, the Pharaohs in Egypt and Jesus came to earth and the medieval times, all of those things are very important, but we also try to put personal items too. So we'll put in grandparents' birthdays, uh, any ancestors, if you've got any kind of genealogy um, research that's been done, put those people on your timeline. It'll be so fun to see you know, great, great grandparents in the same time as some famous people. You can put you on the timeline and show your kids, hey, I was born back in the 1900s and this is what was going on then. <laughs> and um, anyway, show them how history has progressed because yeah. most people have not learned it that way, sadly, that it's all one long story and it's all connected. Mm. And then keep the timeline going pull out a map and start reading some good stories. I love historical fiction. That's absolutely what made me love history as a kid was a story that was based on real events with some adventure and a character who was probably my age in the main part of the story. And it helped me just to live it, you know, live medieval events or, you know, Bible smugglers. I loved church history when I was a kid because my mom got her hands on some really neat books about, you know, the Reformation and people trying to smuggle the Bible or copy it. Um, you know, the pioneers going west has long been one of my favorite things because you could get so many stories that put you in that covered wagon and, yeah. and, you know, out in the middle of nowhere and building a log cabin with Ma and Pa Ingalls and all of those things. So get good stories. Historical fiction is great. But alongside that, try to find some um, factual history, which thanks to the internet is so easy to do. You can go on to the internet and just look up anything. And there's probably an artifact. There's probably a virtual field trip. You can tour the pyramids. Uh, you can go to the British Museum, which has tons of world history and see the artifacts online. Let the internet be your friend in this case. And when I say that, I want to issue a little bit of caution. The internet is not always your friend with history, but mm. you can definitely find the the artifacts and the virtual field trips, like I said, and see these things. We did a virtual um, video walkthrough of um, oh, Pompeii, where oh. the the volcano exploded and just obliterated the whole town, but that volcanic ash preserved the town too. And so yeah. we just went on YouTube and started searching and we did a walkthrough with some guy who did a video and got to see that town. It was just amazing. And so instead of just reading it, we got to see it. And that kind of, mm -hmm. that's like a second layer of really experiencing it. Oh, this was real. And you can, if you want to get on an airplane, you can go over there today and walk through that. Um, and so 
Field trips, whether they're virtual or in person, are definitely fun. And, you know, get out of the house, go walk through a museum. And my favorite way to do this, obviously, is to see things that we're reading about right now. So like mm -hmm. in, in our house, we're just about to embark on Renaissance history, Renaissance and Reformation, a little bit of the beginnings of America. And so um, there's a Renaissance fair locally this month. That's a perfect opportunity to go. You can go to a Renaissance Fair anytime, but man, it really makes a difference if you've been reading about it and you go see the costumes and eat the food and play the games. Even if they don't tell you anything historical, just being in that environment really brings it to life. Um, yeah. Go to history reenactments. You know, there's always some sort of battle reenactment you can go to. Um, American history, obviously our history is more limited, but go, go see it all, go to whatever there is available and live it in, in person. Um, food is a very fun way to bring it to life. And so oh, look fun. up historical recipes and, you know, if you eat one meal every school year, that's devoted to your historical timeline, they're going to remember it. Um, yeah. and, and here's a tip. Every historic meal is meat and bread and then some kind of vegetable, <laughs> some kind of fruit. Put some grapes on the table if it's uh, world history, you know, Mediterranean. But every culture has meat and bread. You know, get a roasted chicken from the grocery store, get a loaf of French bread or some sort of fancy round loaf, and you've got the beginnings of a historic meal. Or look up recipes and make them together. But uh, food definitely makes school more fun. And so when they're eating food, uh, if, if possible, get everybody to wear a costume, watch a movie <laughs> um, that's based on your time period and just make the whole thing very sensory. Yeah. Speaking of costumes, my kids have all outgrown their costume phase now, but we went years and years and years where everybody wore costumes all day, every day. And so I always tried to look out for stuff that was historic so that they could dress like a knight or a princess or someone from the Bible or a pilgrim. We had lots of pilgrim costumes. Um, give them that ability to dress up. Go, you yeah. know, we always went right after Halloween and got the clearance sales or went to thrift stores during Halloween season because they have all the used costumes out. You can get them cheap, um, make them, whatever you want to do, but give your kids lots of opportunities to dress up and be those characters too. Yeah. It's so funny you say that because we're just I, the other day we were talking about, we only live an hour and a half from the Independence, Kansas, uh, Little House Museum. It's so ridiculous. We have not been there yet. I don't know why. <laughs> I go. love Little House. I love the whole Little yes, House series. And I want to be Ma. I've said that on the me podcast <laughs> many times. But I want to have electricity and indoor right. plumbing. So if I could mm -hmm. just have air that. Air conditioning. Yeah. Air conditioning. Yes. Those three <laughs> things would be amazing. But yes. they, they're having pioneer days um, that are coming up oh. soon. And so I showed my girls. And I was like, look, we could dress up like Laura and Mary and Ma. And they were like, not a chance. <laughs> I know. <laughs> like, Come on. Oh. It's so fun, but I missed uh, the no, little we, years. <laughs> I know, I know. Oh, yeah. Several years ago, they bo both would have done that, especially, uh, yeah. especially my youngest one. She would have been all over that. But now they're too <laughs> old and too cool for that kind of stuff. Um, but it's so Still much fun to do go those to things. The event and, anyway, yes, yes, yeah. But you know, it's so funny. I looked at a picture on their website and all the kids were dressed up, and I thought, well, we can't go in jeans and a t-shirt. We would look ridiculous. <laughs> so we might have to go outside of the Pioneer Days event. That's true. Um, yeah. And just dress like normal people. But anyway, let's take a break. We'll be right back. We want to thank all of our sponsors for making this show possible. BJU Press Homeschool, CTC Math, Apologia, and IEW. Without them, we wouldn't be able to do this. Visit the show notes for links to these great companies and thank them for supporting the Schoolhouse Rock podcast. We are back with Nikki. Um, so let's talk about a few more ways to just make history come alive and make it fun. What other points do you have? Well, as I mentioned on the previous podcast where we were talking about language arts, um, reading books is so important. And a lot of our reading in our school is history. Um, in fact, mm -hmm. most everything we do in school is based on our core history topic. Like I said, we're currently about to go into Renaissance history. And so almost everything we do is going to be surrounding that. And that includes our literature. So I will either grab, I mean, I go ahead and start picking out books before we start the curriculum. And we use Mystery of History, by the way. So we will pick out several, or I pick out <laughs> several historic um, 
you know, fiction books, but also the kind that like an Usborne book or um, mm-hmm. DK book that has tons and tons of photographs. Yeah. Those are so fun. And and lots of illustrations of the insides of houses and, you know, how everybody did everything. Those are really valuable books. And I, we use both. We use the nonfiction and the fiction. And then if there is, um, sometimes you'll get a biography. Like if we're getting ready to study the Reformation, we will read straight from Martin Luther's writings. And so that's not fiction. It's not an Esborn book, but it's ooh, it's a primary source. And that's the best thing for history. And so I want to mention, that's how we pull our literature into our history. But I want to mention the importance of primary sources, because for those that are not familiar with that term, that's history that was written down at the time that it happened. So, mm. um, you know, when our founding fathers wrote their diaries, when we have their speeches, those are primary sources. Um, the Magna Carta is a primary mm-hmm. source, but also any documents written by people that were alive at that time, you know, at the, the time of the Magna Carta, that's a primary source. We have lots of different chronicles written throughout history. So anytime you can pull that in, definitely do it. Um, no matter what age your children are, because it's important for them to see this is a, this document is a thousand years old and this is how we know it happened. And if you only have little kids, but you want to show them, you know, maybe a a chronicle like the Anglo-Saxon chronicle that, that tells a lot of really interesting history, little tiny snippets, you know, it talks about all of the English, um, the Englishmen before they were considered English. Um, You don't have to read the Anglo-Saxon Chronicle to your five-year-old, but if you have a copy, and you can get all this stuff on Amazon, by the way, if you have a copy, you can read them a couple of lines and say, this was written by people over a thousand years ago. That's Mm. how we know what happened. They wrote it down. Um, You know, when the Vikings attacked England, they were writing it down and they described what happened. That's where we get the information from. Pull them in, even, even if your children are young and you just do snippets. That's okay. Yeah. Just show them and say, this is real. This is not something that someone made up later. Yeah. Um, in fact, I'll do a little plug for my um, Knowledge Keepers bookstore. That's what I specialize in. I have found old books that went out of print and brought them back into print because they oh, are primary wow. sources. So okay. every one of them, I have um, 13, 14 different titles right now. Okay. And they were all that kind written by people who were there, they saw the history or they wrote a diary and it's been published. I haven't changed anything. I just thought, wow, this is too good to go, yeah, you know, to go into awesome. the, the dustbin of history. So they're just brought back in paperback form. Oh, that's so cool. And that's on your website, I'm assuming. Yes, you can get there from Nikki Um, but that okay. website is knowledgekeepersbookstore.com. Okay. I didn't know Um, you even had that. That's great. Oh, yes. That's that's my whole other side business and hobby. Okay. Um, So also, I highly recommend making stuff. And I know that's kind of a general category there, but some families kind of tend to shy away from crafts. But I I would like to recommend that you try. You know, um, we did Sumerian clay tablets one day, and all I did was buy the the modeling clay from Walmart that's air dry and some uh, little wooden, I don't even remember what they're called. They're not dowel rods. They're very thin, but they were able, the kids are able to basically make a Sumerian alphabet on the clay, let it dry, done. It was a simple craft. It was not messy. Um, But they, after we learned about the Sumerians and, and, you know, their contribution to the written word and history, that was a fun way to solidify it get their hands busy. They kind of worked on it while I was reading aloud. So that was kind of a, you know, keep your hands busy while you're listening to me. Getting hands on is so fun. And um, I would say if, if you don't like messes or crafts, just set aside a day, cover your table with something protective and just do it anyway, because the kids will not forget, Um, you know, paint the picture, Whatever it is, there's so many different possibilities throughout world history that you can yeah. that you can get hands on. It can be small, it can be huge. Um, when I was a kid, we, you know, I'm from Texas. We've been Texans for nine generations. Uh, we did a paper mache Alamo. It was big, 
Oh, <laughs> and fine. lots of people were involved. I will never forget that. Yeah. Um, so that's the kind of thing you can do a group project or just a little family craft, whatever, but yeah. get, get involved with that. And I'm saying do it once a month or twice a year. It doesn't have to yeah. be every day. Yeah. Um, and one of my most important pieces of advice when teaching history to your children is to do it chronologically, mm. because, uh, if you went to public school, you might very well have learned it all over the timeline without understanding how people and places were connected. And so I always like to start history at the beginning at Genesis one, watch the progression of world history and biblical history because they went together and see how it all happened and played out and see, you'll just see so many different ways that one thing builds on the one before it, you know, one group of people, whatever they did, wherever they came from, it's the result of the people, the generation before them or multiple generations yeah. before them. Um, you see that in the Old and New Testaments. You see it all throughout world history. And you cannot study American history without understanding world history before it. We are such a small blip on the radar of history right. here in America, but we tend to think, oh, American history is all there is. And yeah. it's not. There's, there's so much of what we have that it's only because of what happened in England and Germany and other places in the world. And without those events, our history might be very different. So whatever history curriculum you use, try to try to start at the beginning of world history and do it all um, chronologically. Yeah. Yeah. You mentioned uh, that you use the mystery of history and we love the mystery of history. We've used that too. And I love that specifically because she, well, it's, it's very well written. Uh, it's written mm -hmm. by Linda Hobar. She's mm -hmm. got all four volumes, but it is written from a biblical worldview. And it is. so that is such an important part of teaching any history curriculum. I think that we tend to think, well, mm -hmm. if you just pull any history, it'll be fine. Um, we've also used not grass history, which we've really mm -hmm. enjoyed. Um, and I know there's tons of great, um, you know, history, uh, BJU press has great history, um, resources, and all of those are from a strong, solid biblical worldview. And so, you know, as people yes. are looking I'm for- I'm glad you brought that up too, history. because some people say um, Christian history, a Christian history curriculum is very biased. And I think some of them can be, but honestly, uh, if you try to be unbiased, generally they leave out all of biblical history. Right. And that's biased yeah. also. So you right. want something <laughs> that recognizes all of world history, the good and the bad, all the ugly yep. stuff too, but- shows you God's hand in history and shows you who all was yeah. Christians. So many of yeah. the people that we study all throughout history, most people don't know that they were Christians, famous scientists mm -hmm. and explorers. Right. And so that's very important to know too. Yes. Yeah. Great stuff. And timelines are so fun. I remember the first time I never knew what a timeline was. I mean, I don't know mm -hmm. if our, if I ever had a teacher who used a timeline. I mean, we talked about dates but mm -hmm. I never got the concept, as silly as it sounds, of what an entire timeline looked like. And we went to our first homeschool convention, and this was in 2010, I guess it was. Um, okay. It was Brooklyn's, um, you know, was, I was pregnant with Lacey. And wow. I remember going to a booth and seeing a, a timeline chart that you could pull out. And I was like, what is this thing? <laughs> and what do yes. you do with it? And it was just so cool to look at that. And now, of course, I'm like, well, of course we should all know what a timeline is. <laughs> and it's exciting to look at it and be able to just, uh, you know, and I mean, like my Bible, my study Bible has little timeline, yeah. you know, bits of timeline as I'm reading through the Bible, but to just see it as a whole chart mm -hmm. unfolded and to see from the beginning of creation until today, yes. all the events that have taken place, um, it's really neat to see, uh, you know, it's neat to see it how is. God's hand has been uh, truly at work. It is. Do you have that big green one, the Adam's chronological history? No, no. I, that's oh. the one that we saw. Um, okay. That yes. one is so neat. And, you is know, it? we, we use it. Um, the only way we use it though, is we pull it out and fold the whole thing out across the living room floor. Yeah. And the kids just look at it and they, and it shows you, you know, by year, everything was happening in every country around the world. Yep. And, and it's such a neat visual representation of yes. world history. It's, yep. and if anybody hasn't seen that, it's a giant green hardback book. It's at all the conventions. It's on Amazon. It's called yep. the, it's Adam's something. 
It's a, it's a yeah, longer we'll, word than chronological, but yes. Right. We'll find a link to that and we'll put that okay. in the show notes so that people can easily find it. We it's ended up doing one. classical conversations um, okay. you know, for yes. the first few years. And so we have our timeline They're cards and I still have timelines. those in this, you know, nice little binders and, uh, you know, yeah. we the timeline song. And that was really fun um, just to get yeah. kind of that the visual, but then also you get that auditory learning the different yeah, uh, parts of, of the timeline. So yeah. anyway, we're out of time, but we're going to come back tomorrow and we are going to talk about teaching multiple ages together because Nikki Truesdale, Mama Five, she has been there. She's done that. And uh, so we're going to talk through that. So Nikki, thank you so much for joining us again today. You guys can find out all the things by looking on the show notes, but you can go to NikkiTruesdale.com as well and get lots and lots of great information, including her book. Uh, you, anyone can homeschool. Um, you can homeschool. If you're yes, listening you to this and you're like, <laughs> I can't do it. Yes, you can. Yes, Nikki you has can. a story. We will link her first um, interview with us um, in the show notes as well, because it's a, her, her testimony is absolutely incredible. Um, what God has done with her and through her and her family and her obedience to homeschool her kids. So, so check that episode out if you haven't listened to it. And if you haven't watched the movie, Schoolhouse Rocked, The Homeschool Revolution. Well, let me just tell you, Nikki has seen it. All the cool moms have seen it. And so if you haven't seen it, you want to be a cool mom and you want to watch yep. the movie. Go to schoolhouserockedmovie.com. You can stream it for free. It doesn't cost you anything. Oh yeah, just your email. You have to put in your email and it gives you instant access to watch the movie. You don't even have to wait for us to email you a link to it. You just put in your email and then it pops up on the screen like magic. So watch it for free. Watch it with your kids, watch it with your spouse, watch it with your parents, watch it with whoever you want to watch it with, and it will encourage you. Thank you guys for being with us today. And we'll see you back here tomorrow. Bye. A mom said to me one time, aren't you worried about sheltering your children? And I said to her, we care more about sheltering tomato plants in the culture right now than we do about our precious children. And so if someone wants to accuse me of sheltering my children, my answer is always absolutely yes. I will shelter my child until I know my child can stand up against the elements of the culture so that they can grow to maturity. And we slowly begin to remove the shelter from around them as we see that they are mature and that they understand the battle lines around them and can engage the culture from a position of strength rather than weakness.